Well, we do have a tornado warning to tell you about. The watch has been in place for some time, and that goes until 8 o'clock. Let me get you to the graphics here, and we'll point out uh, as this new information comes in. We've got a tornado warning being issued for parts of Breckenridge, Mead, and Perry counties. This will go until 4.15 Central Time, so that's 5.15. That's another 45 minutes from now. This storm we mentioned earlier was showing some signs of rotation, so that's increasing just a bit. So we begin right now our nonstop coverage to make sure folks in the path of this storm not only can take the appropriate shelter, but make sure, because this storm does contain hail, that you, uh, and you've got some time. That's the good news. It's moving at about 25 to 35 miles an hour, so it's not a fast mover. But uh, if you have the opportunity to move the cars, move the cars. If you have the opportunity to get in the basement or the lowest level, get in the lowest level. Again, this is going across northern Breckenridge County, just south of Rodalia, north of Hardensburg. So Hardensburg, you are not in this warning. It's moving out of Perry County and right now the core of that hail would be crossing between Gerald and Stevensport right along the Ohio River. So I'm going to zoom into this a little more and we'll give you some street level mapping on this just to keep you updated. This is a tornado warning that's been issued. It's radar indicated and uh, again it goes until about 415 local time for these folks. Let me go to our tools. I want to show you the rotation that we have. I'm going to use the velocity scope here just to point out where we have the strongest rotation with this. You're going to find it right along Indiana 166 and there it is. So it's going to move right into Stevensport, just past Cloverport. This is right along the Ohio River. This is where we have some bounded winds, and it's pretty intense. So we've got some strong winds here as this storm moves over into the Stevensport area. We'll be approaching Ammons. This is right along 259. So if you're in the path of this, Indiana 66, you're on top of it. Stevensport in Kentucky, right along the river. Really, it's on top of you. And that's where it's going to move, right across 259 into Kentucky. So those are areas of concern as we watch this storm move off to the east at about 25 to 35 miles an hour. We have additional severe weather or severe thunderstorms going on. Let me zoom to the home view so folks know where we're talking about. Out of our entire viewing area, We've been giving updates all afternoon on the severe thunderstorm warnings. We've got one of those in Harrison County, Indiana, moving through Cordon, right along Interstate 64. It'll be knocking on our door in Louisville within the next 20, 30 minutes. As we look back to our east, we've got severe thunderstorms moving across eastern Shelby County, lifting up into Franklin County. All of those, both of those, have the potential to produce hail. The one that is rotating that shows the signs indicated by radar of producing the tornado happens to be the storm that's moving out of Perry County, Indiana, and into the northern parts, and it's not a hugely populated area, but it's the northern parts of Breckenridge County. And I'll reiterate that Hardensburg, the storm storm is not in your area. It's north of you, simply because that's the center of the population for Breckenridge County. Let me square up our map here. I'm going to go to our pan tool and we'll just kind of focus in on what we're looking at with this storm because there's a number of factors that will go. So that's, that's a good location for that. Stevensport. You've got to be in your tornado safe place. Gerald, you should be in your tornado safe place. I'm going to the tools and we're going to pop on a couple of things. We'll start with the velocity and then I'll dive into some of the hail. First of all, the velocity and the sort of couplet that we're watching is moving very close to Stevensport as we speak. If I zoom into it a little more, you'll see it a little clearer. And I promised some street levels, and I mentioned a few of those just a second ago. That's the couplet right over the river, right where that bend is, right along 144 and uh, Indiana 66. So bounded by those two roads, one in Indiana, one in Kentucky, right along the river. That is the rotation. It's going to move right across Stevensport. There's no question. You've got to be in your tornado safe place if you're in Addison, if you're in Stevensport, if you're in Ammons, if you're in Sample or Union Star. We have some intense weather push pushing through with not only wind and the potential for that rotation, but also the heavy rain and the hail. We do have hail with this storm, generally on the northern side. So let me go back to the radar view, and I'm going to scan the hail for you. And let me just pan this down because the hail is going to show up on that northern edge, as we mentioned. So we've got the rotation near the river, but the hail is in parts of Perry County and in Indiana. If we go back to our tools, I can show you on the hail scope some of the size of the potential hail that's involved. So we look inside, you can see, I'm just going to scan that down. And notice right along Indiana 66 again, 
potential for golf ball size hail. Certainly, even if a little bit of it melts, we could have ping pong ball size hail. So we have an increasing thunderstorm that's building with intensity, both with wind, rotation, and with hail. So this is a growing uh, thunderstorm that has the potential and certainly an increasing look of what could be a tornadic storm. At this point, it's radar indicated, but it's best to get the warning before it's too late, right? Uh, so let's go back to our camera view. Back to our home view, the tornado warning includes parts of Perry County, but right now it's pretty much moving out of Perry County. We'll be moving into extreme northern parts, and really that's the northern fourth or northern third of Breckenridge County. Severe thunderstorm warning just west of Louisville. I'm going to zoom into that too. We'll cover all the weather that's going on across the region. Most of Jefferson County, with the exception of eastern Jefferson County and some light rain, is dry. The thunderstorm that is approaching moving past Corridon near Crandall right along 64 will be moving into Floyd County and eventually Jefferson County. This storm has shown some signs of weakening. There's just not a ton. Uh, as I put it into motion, you can see the weakening phase of it as it pushes in. There's not a ton of uh, hail with this any longer. We've had some pea-sized hail within the last 20 minutes out of this, but for the most part, there's just not a lot of hail out of this storm. Again, we go back to our tools, and let me just uh, go to the velocity just to check this storm. Yeah, we don't even have any pockets of real strong wind with this storm. So right along 64, you're going to see some uh, heavy rain along with a little lightning. That's going to push through Lanesville, Edwardsville, eventually into all of Floyd County and across the river into Jefferson County. But at this point, we're not going to be overly concerned with that storm. We'll keep an eye on it, but that's not one that is showing any potential for harm. All right, back to our camera view. We're going to zoom into the one over near Franklin County. This one is moving in. I haven't, I'm going to go back to the tornado warning in a second. This one has hail near Graffenburg. This is pushing across far eastern parts of Shelby County, right along U.S. 60 just north of Harrisonville. This will lift into the capital city of Frankfurt within the next 20 minutes. So we're going to see this storm push in with heavy rain, some lightning, and the potential for some small hail. Let's take a look at the hail tracker with that. We go to the hail scope for that, and I'm going to just zoom our little scope on here, and you'll notice that's right over the Graffenburg area. Again, a small location where we could see that golf ball size hail approaching Graffenburg and eventually into Frankfurt. So small geographical area, but a few folks could see that intensity in terms of hail. Back to our camera view, home view, and let's go back to the tornado warning. Again, northern Breckenridge County, you're the only ones in this warning, and that warning, as we zoom into it, will go until 515. I'm gonna zoom back in. Those are the three warnings that we have. Really, there's a fourth because this also has a severe thunderstorm warning with it. So we have four warnings, three severe thunderstorm, one tornado warning. The tornado warning is for the Stevensport area um, as we look down into Breckenridge County. Some hail moving out of that. The greatest rotation, again, right across the river. Back to our velocity, I'm gonna zoom back in so we can give you just as specific of information as we can, and we'll center that back up, and you can see what we're tracking. We note that on the reflectivity, we have some very sharp returns. That purple would indicate the hail. On the back side of this is where we would have the couplet. So let's just confirm that with the radar to the tools and the velocity we go. You're going to notice that is where we have the couplet moving right across Stevensport. Ryan Hoax in the studio with me, Jessica Dobson out in the storm tracker. Let's go over to Ryan for an update. Okay, yeah, we're tracking this storm that's moving into the Frankfurt area. You don't want to forget you guys out there with the uh, Frankfurt cable system here. Some big hail with this storm, potentially some of the uh, data here on our radar display indicating the potential for greater than quarter size hail at this point. Now trying to move into areas just west of Frankfurt. You see that there? Possibly quarter to half dollar size hail. I want to put a track on this uh, just so you can get your bearings of when to expect this storm in your neck of the woods out that way. These storms, by the way, today moving pretty slowly. So if we go for about the next 40 minutes there, you see Kennebec, uh, Harveyland, Peaks Mill at about 523 there. The very core of this storm will likely uh, pass just to the west of Frankfurt, but the west side of Frankfurt, you guys are going to see uh, some pretty decent hail here over about the next uh, 20, 25 minutes.
Davis. Kev. All right, uh, back to the tornado warning coverage uh, moving across Breckenridge County we go. You're going to see that uh, this storm still showing some rotation. It's uh, bounded right over Stevensport, moving right across the Ohio River. Notice the brighter color showing up in the velocity. This is passing uh, right at the junction of 259 and 144. That's a quick burst of wind pushing in, so some strong winds here. When we look at the hail, you're going to notice that strongest farther to the north, maybe even outside of the tornado warning itself. So we've got the tornado warning and the severe thunderstorm warning covering two of the same locations, just so uh, you get your ideas, uh, bearings together on that, where we have the hail potential swinging up toward 259 over toward Rodelia eventually. This will all track to the east. Again, it's not super organized, but it's enough on the radar to see the rotation. We saw it earlier, and then the warning was issued based on the radar information. So there's no confirmed report of a tornado with this, but certainly as it moves off to the east at a fairly slow pace, you have time to sort of make your plans, get to the lowest level. Stevensport, it's on top of you right now, but places like Mystic and Raymond, Get to your tornado safe place as we speak. It is going to cross the county border. We'll see if the warning continues much past where we have the uh, polygon drawn, but uh, uh, Sirocco, it's going to be passing off toward you. That's uh, you at our Kentucky uh, 376. So that's one of the roads that rolls right through that general area. I'm going to go back to our home view again, just keeping an eye on all of the storms around the area. This one affecting a small population, one across northern Breckenridge County. Obviously, Hardensburg, the county seat, is not in that. We've got the storm tracker deployed. We'll try to swing that down toward Brandenburg. It was in Harrison County, so it's not too far away at this point. Jessica Dobson on board. One thing you will note is uh, as we take a look at what's happening in Jefferson County, the storm that we we're watching pushing out of Crawford County has weakened somewhat. There's no longer a warning with that. However, we will continue to see at least the opportunity for some showers and thunderstorms that may impact parts of the metro moving into Floyd, eventually northern Jefferson County, certainly southern Indiana from New Albany to Clarksville, Jeffersonville, likely downtown. So as this storm moves in, it's going to be an inconvenience sort of at a bad time in terms of rush hour traffic, but that'll be a pretty quick hit uh, as that moves in with just some heavy rain, maybe some gusty winds, but nothing overly impressive. Now, the tornado warning uh, that we have is farther to our south, and I'm going to just kind of work our way back down to that, just giving frequent updates for all of the storms around. Ryan mentioned the one going on across Franklin County. That storm had a history of producing hail. That's the storm we had golf ball size or ping pong ball size hail. This storm likewise likely producing hail. Sometimes we don't get the reports as fast as we like and that's based on population. If it's over a rural area, it takes a lot longer to get that information back into the uh, news center. You'll see that the tornado warning's been pared back so it no longer includes Perry County. This is now solidly across parts of Breckenridge and Meade counties and that goes until 515. So the tornado warning will continue. It's still just radar indicated for parts of Breckenridge and extreme western Meade County. Irvington would be right on the edge of this storm, but certainly within the bounds of the warning. And that means you have to prepare. And you've got a little bit of time to get in your tornado safe place. Those are the warnings that we have. That is the only tornado warning that we have. We've been also tracking the uh, severe thunderstorm warning. You see that now flashing. That's the yellow polygon that we have where they indicate that that warning will continue until five o'clock and that the tornado is obviously possible. Consequently, we've got the tornado warning with that. All right, let's uh, jump back in, and I'm going to show you uh, some of the features of this storm. Let's just put the velocity on first, and then we'll take a look at the hail. Again, the velocity indicating now just passing the Stevensport area is where we would have the greatest wind potential. The radar indicated tornado pushing off to the east roughly at about 25 to 35 miles an hour. So it's typically moving a little slower than the ones we've had of past weeks and months that were up there at 50, 60 mile an hour. This one moving a little bit slower. Nonetheless, radar indicated. Back to the radar we go. And then we'll go back and uh, put on some of the hail markers. So as we zoom in, let me just zoom in a little tighter so we can see some of the locations. Um, and we'll just zoom in just south of Rodelia. It's passing Stevensport. Ammons would be in there, 144 
moving closer to Rodelia. There's likely some P to maybe quarter size hail mixed in just north of uh, 144, very close to 477. We can take a look at that with the tools back to the hail scope, and then let's just scan the storm. You'll see what we're talking about inside. The hail data sometimes runs a little lags behind, but again, right where we pointed out, where we thought we could see some of the larger hail, that deep pink indicating the golf ball size, very small location for that. The idea is much of that melts as it starts to make its way through a very warm environment. That would mean that it would be down to nickel to quarter size hail most likely for some places along uh, 144 for folks that are in that area. Otherwise, it's a period of very heavy rain. There is the rotation that we've also been tracking. Let me just take a look at that. I'll just put it full on velocity so we can see that. And again, that's moving close to mystic at this point. So we can sort of square up our camera view. We go back and pan it over. We're out of Perry County, so you are in the clear. If you're hearing my voice and you're in Perry County, Come on out. You've got a little rain still left over, but the threat of any tornado is out of your area. In fact, this tornadic type weather is not all that impressive. We do have a strong wind field, but the uh, the rotation is really secondary today to the hail threat that we've had. So we obviously have the couplet that we're watching across parts of Breckenridge County moving past Stevensport, approaching the Mystic area. And you see that bounded by the bright reds and the bright greens. So obviously we've got winds going toward and away from the radar in a very tight area. It's that zone between, well, Mystic and Raymond that we would be most concerned with. If you're familiar with those small towns in northern Breckenridge County, you've got to be in your tornado safe place at this point. This does not cover a huge area. This certainly doesn't affect a whole lot of people. This is a very uh, sparsely populated region of Breckenridge County. All right, let's get a check of some of the other storms around the area. I'm going to go back to the radar view, back to our home view. I'll point out that while I'm watching the storm down in northern Breckenridge County. We have additional severe thunderstorm moving out of far eastern Shelby County, lifting into Franklin County, and Ryan Hoke has his eye on that storm, right? That is the storm we're keeping track of, Kevin, and what we've seen develop over the past couple of radar scans is a little bit of mid-level rotation now trying to move toward the north and west part of Frankfort there. It's not a huge deal, only about 30 mile per hour winds on this, but just something to keep an eye on. The bigger story with this storm, by and large, is the hail potential. Of course, this lags behind about five minutes or so, so you can see where we've got the quarter plus size hail potential. The current location of that's basically on the southwest side of Frankfurt. It'll scrape by the very north and east side of Frankfurt, that core right there. So it's going to head in that direction. Peaks Mill areas uh, north and east of Frankfurt you need to be on standby for some hail that could be half dollar size in some cases. Kevin, the hail is one of the big takeaways from today's storm. So much energy in the atmosphere. Yeah, just seeing a report from a ham radio operator out of Grafenberg, that same storm that you're watching far eastern uh, Shelby County, that storm producing anywhere between quarter to golf ball size hail. So that is confirmed. That is there. As Ryan pointed out, if you're anywhere in far eastern Shelby or up into Franklin County near the capital city of Frankfurt, you've got to take precautions for some of that hail to move in your direction. All right, let's go back inside the storm that we're watching to the south and off to our west. This is northern Breckenridge County. We're coming up on 5 o'clock. It's 455. We're tracking severe weather across parts of Wave country and included and that happens to be one tornado warning that is radar indicated. So again, we're making calls to all of the law enforcement agencies to say, hey, do we have any damage? We know we had damage yesterday with non tornadic storms down across parts of Hardin County, Marion County, Taylor County. We had macro burst damage that put down some strong winds. David Mattingly's in Calvary. We're going to check in with him coming up in just a moment. Show you what some of these winds can do. So I'll ask our control room to get him on board. Let's get a shot from him coming up. You'll also notice that we have these storms that are pushing through with some strong winds, but more than likely it's heavy rain and hail. New warning coming out. This severe thunderstorm warning is for Franklin Henry. So it's an extenuation of that thunderstorm. This infects a large population because it's moving right across Frankfurt. It's pushing uh, until 530 with the warning. That includes Frankfurt. Peaks Mill and Stamping Ground. Ryan was going through the sort of problems with this storm, mainly being the large hail. This is back to the tornado warning that we have. And I'm going to show you the velocity on this as we sort of square up 
I'm going to just move this back to the edge so we can see how far out it goes. And then we can go to our tools and put on the velocity from this. And you're going to still see that couplet showing up. In fact, would argue that it's even tighter now. So we're still seeing the potential rotation within this storm right across northern Breckenridge County, soon to move across the county line. This takes us into Meade County right here. This is south of Rodalia, moving right across Mystic and approaching Raymond. That is going to be the core of that storm as it moves through. So you say, well, what about hail with this storm? Let's just take a look. Well, I have the velocity up. Here comes the hail. And you're going to see a couple of images pop on. We'll look inside the storm, pushing this uh, hail potential again. Still up to golf ball size, but melting some. Wouldn't be surprised to see a small area picking up that large hail, upwards of ping pong ball size, very close to Stevensport, Ammons, Mystic, or Raymond. It's right in that general area of northern Breckenridge County that stands that greatest potential. This is the velocity. This shows us the wind and the rotation within that storm, and the radar view is going to show the potential for that hail now crossing over into Meade County, south of Rodalia, and then um, very heavy rain. I mean, they're seeing some tremendous rain with this as well. Could even see as, you know, it's moving at about 25 to 35 miles an hour, but with the tremendous amount of rain sort of training in the location of this storm, we may wind up seeing some um, flooding issues with this. Again